chosen ones, empaths, when the narcissist realizes we no longer want them back, this is where we all need to get to. We all have to get to this point, right? We've had clear signs now from God, from the universe, that this person is toxic, that this person devalued us, that this person smeared our name possibly, that this person ultimately dragged us through the mud, okay? So we need to actually shape in our brain, our soul, our heart, our mind, everything, physically, spiritually, mentally, and not want them back, right? And this is why I often say, everyone says, no contact, no contact, no contact. And I get that. I totally get the no contact thing. But if you seriously get to the point when you don't want them back, right, and they reach out with a hoover, tell them about themselves. Tell them about themselves. Say, look, I've awoken now. You're a narcissist. You're a devil. I don't want nothing to do with you. Go off with as many new supplies as you want. I do not care. <laughs> Tell them about themselves. Say, I wouldn't touch you with a pole. Say anything. I'm just coming off with things off the top of my head. Tell them something to, to hurt them. Because just you rejecting them alone and saying no, this causes an injury. So if you add into the mix some hurtful things to actually say to them, and I'm not condoning hurt, hurtful speech and stuff like that, but these lot deserve it. They need to know. Because, I'm sorry, but these don't stay in the stupid mind state, right? This is what makes it, like, the long... I made a video earlier about the silent period that the narcissist goes on, right? When they go silent. This is what causes them to go on extensive amounts of silent treatment. Like, not silent treatment, but going silent after you lot have separated. Where you don't know what they're doing, you don't really know, they're quiet. The reason why they go so quiet is because part of them still believes you want them back. And I say that if we can all collectively get to the point where we say, no, narcissist, I don't want you back. I will never lay with you ever again. You will never get into my house again. We are never going to have a conversation one to one again. Listen, the last time I'm, the last time I'm going to speak to you is now. And you say what it is to them. Because this reminds me of what happened in my situation. And at the time, ah, you know, when I started to watch narcissist content, and they started to say that you shouldn't speak to them. And I started to regret me, me speaking to them. But as time's progressed and time's gone on, I'm thankful I spoke to them. I sent them an email. But in the email, I wasn't hurtful. But I wasn't kind. I was like a balance between the two. Right? So I was merely actually pointing out the things like them lying. I didn't say, oh, you've lied. I just pointed out the things of why lying is wrong. I said about things that the future that I would like to go on, on with them if they want to partake in it. But I also said in the drawing close of it that if we don't work this out, then it's God's will. So they already kind of knew that I had built up my closure and they denied me of closure, which actually forced me to reach out to them by email. They denied me of closure. And then because I think they saw how much I'd healed over the few months I had, because I didn't speak to them at all. I went silent, right? But I didn't know at the time they were hacking my device. So the point is the silence, which I'm trying to tell you lot, which is very powerful. These lot was all watching me write out an email, right? They was watching me write this out. They was watching me go on YouTube. They was watching me do these things. So they knew what I was thinking, right? It's either a same shared Gmail account or they, they installed one of those partner hacking apps to put into the person's phone and they can watch what you're doing. This is how cunning the narcissist was, right? And the narcissist is so sick as well. I remember they bought me a t-shirt and it wasn't until after I realized the brand of the t-shirt was called Hack. It's not a popular, it was just a random cheap shirt, you know what I mean? But it said Hack on it. They took the piss. They took the real piss. Please press the like and the subscribe button. Help your brother out. Take two seconds of your time. Thank you. But once the narcissist realizes that you don't want them back in your life, like even in the email that I sent to them, I was making it clear. I don't want them back in my life if they're this way or that way. I made it clear, you know, about them. I called them out on all their BS. 
I called them out about certain things they'd done, you know. And the, one of the clues how I knew they hacked me is I went on a dating app, right? And then they joined the dating app and viewed my profile and it come up that they viewed me and they had a big picture of an eye, you know, like the Illuminati eye or the, the all-seeing eye. They, they made their photo look like the all-seeing eye as, the display, as their profile picture, meaning I'm watching you, right? And that's, that's what they were kind of doing. So that's why it's actually a lot more complicated now with them in their situation because they smeared me so much and because um, everything they've they done to me. And then now they're left actually wanting me back, which is proven through the Hoover attempts that I've had. But I rejected them through them Hoover attempts. And what I'm trying to say is, it's a powerful time. And it's a significant in your step, in your journey, when you actually know that you don't want them back in your life. It's such a powerful, like, liberating moment. Like, I don't want them back. We spent, we spent months, years wanting these people back in some cases, right, like wanting them back, trying to work it out, problem solving, you know, like all we want is them back in our lives, what a waste of time, what a waste of energy, once we get to that point, and I believe, I trust in God, and I trust in the universe that however far you are on your healing journey, right, whether this is fresh, or you've been on your healing journey for some time, and you still part of you wants them back, I believe inevitably you're going to hit that point, where you don't want them back, I promise you. So don't feel like depleted if you feel like I'm saying to you and you feel like, oh, I'm listening to this video, but I still want them back. Don't worry, I swear to God, yeah, I was in your situation. I wanted them back. My healing journey's taken a lot longer. This was all six years ago, you know. Six years ago, I broke up with a narcissist, right? And it's took me... It's took me six years to actually come online and talk about it. I never thought. It was just a quick... I just started posting and then it developed into this, right? But I never thought I would do YouTube. I used to love listening to YouTube, but I never thought in a million years I'll do YouTube, right? And I'm glad I'm doing it now. And I'd rather be doing YouTube now, at least if I can help one person out of all of you lot that are listening, right? Just one person. I'd rather do it just to help that one person than I would be to be in a narcissistic relationship ever again. Seriously. But we all need to get to that point when we don't want them back, right? And this will create the energy shift. This creates the energy shift. It changes the dynamics and it makes them chase you. You now become the prize. They start to chase you. Once you lay down the law and you know that you don't want them back, that's why I'll say to you, if you do utter words to them, my, um, try and be emotionless. We need to match it. We need to match their, their kind of, what's the word? We need to match the way they operate, you see. We need to, we need to be emotionless with how we, how we speak to them, right? You know, at the time when I sent that email, I didn't know there was a narcissist. I didn't know there was a narcissist. Seriously, I didn't. And then by the time I found out my phone was hacked, narcissist stuff was coming up on my feed, right? And I clicked one video and I was watching it and I thought, oh, no, because I knew they was watching me on it. And then that was kind of bonding me to, to knowing that they're watching me. It was bonding me, right? Because I knew they was watching me. So I was constantly thinking, oh, I'm watching this. I'm watching that. And I'm doing all these weird things through the phone and that, trying to communicate, right? I remember I was doing my driving lesson uh, theory test. I don't know what it's called in the States or other parts of the world, but it's like the, the theory part of the, the driving test, right? That's what they have in England. And all these like weird things were flashing up on the screen when I was doing it. I don't know, man. This person is a is a real wizard with or a witch with how they operate with this hacking technology because I did not know nothing about it. I don't know a lot about technology, to be honest with you. I'm not that good at it, you know. Um, but they really done it. But by the time, anyway, I've, I've gone off topic, but I hope you understand why why I'm discussing this, right? And all I'm trying to say to you is, if we get to that point when we don't want them back, it is the most powerful and liberating thing we can do for ourselves, for our healing, for our self-love, for everything. And, and, and we're in every bit right to make the narcissists know we don't want them back. Even if they discarded us. Even if they discarded us, you know that we have the final discard. Tell them to go away. Say, I can't believe I chased after you all that time. You're a waste of space. 
you dusty weirdo. And tell them about themselves, man. Think about what you say three times before you speak it, you know what I mean? And then block them. Then block them, then delete them off your things. And there we go, you know? It's a powerful thing. Because the narcissist needs to realise that they messed up with you. The narcissist needs to... Look, I'm probably going to get a lot of backlash in the comment section not agreeing with what I'm saying here, like... like as empaths, we have every right to express ourselves. We have every right to do that. And as I just said a moment ago, I know I'm probably going to get backlash, but I feel like we have every right to express ourselves. And I know it falls on deaf ears with the narcissist. I know the narcissist doesn't reciprocate what we say. I know the narcissist moves the goalpost. I know the narcissist is a toxic manipulator. I know this. But as long as we indulge in a conversation that we're not using our heart, right? We're not using our heart intertwined with the narcissist but we're actually expressing from a standpoint of, a, of ourself, right? Just from ourself. And we're making it clear to them that we don't want them back. Therefore, if we've been discarded, we had the final discard. If they reach out with a Hoover attempt, reject them, reject them, reject them, reject them, right? Then we have the final discard, right? You've got to understand that the narcissist is not serious when they discarded you or pushed you too far or abused you so much you had to push them away. They're not seriously doing that. They're just trying to draw supply from you. They're just trying to draw more and more and more supply. Do you know what I mean? So they love negative energy. They love positive energy. They love all of it. They, 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 they'll, they'll eat it all up. Do you know what I'm saying? They love all of that supply. They love all of it, Right? But what I'm trying to say to you is, is if we can make it crystal clear to them that they're not allowed back into our lives in our vicinity or whatever, then it's, then it's powerful. Okay, I should have probably mentioned it earlier, but say you have children with them, then you make it clear with the grey rock method. Listen, do not chat to me, do not talk to me unless you're talking about the kids. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. We're talking about the children. If we're not talking about the children, please don't chat to me. Don't talk about this. Don't talk about that. Don't buy Mother's Day gifts for me or Father's Day gifts for me or birthday gifts for me from the children. Don't do none of them subtle Hoover attempts. Just keep to you, I'll keep to me. And you, you tell them like that, you know? That's just as powerful as a discard. That's just as powerful, you know, as a discard. Trust me, we need, to, we need to throw this back in their faces. They put us through pain. They put us through suffering, right? They need to know. And this is a real significant step in the healing journey. Do you know, the Hoover attempt that I experienced, right? It caught me so out of the blue. I was never expecting it. I used to see Hoover things online. I never thought it would happen, right? I never thought it would happen. And it took me by surprise. And it still took me by surprise because it's only when I analysed it after, I was like, oh God, that's a hoover. They come in such a snarmy way, right? I didn't even realise they're hoovering me. I'll be honest with you. And I knew about hoovering. I didn't even realise they were hoovering me. So just be wary. You've probably experienced the hoover. Think back to your journey. You've probably already experienced the hoover. And you possibly caused them a narcissistic injury when you didn't reciprocate it. This is why I want you to actually reject them, reject them, reject them, because I want us all to cause the harshest narcissistic injury and let's leave them and their new supply in their fucked up world, right? Leave them in there. Sorry to swear. I really try hard to sw not to swear, but let's leave them in their messed up world, right? Yeah, let them enjoy it and indulge in it and spend the rest of their lives in that if they want to and let them know they can never, ever, ever get back to us. It is the most powerful, and as I'll say once again, the most liberating thing we can do on our healing journey and practice in our self-love journey, right? You see, they get this sudden realization when this takes place. They get a sudden realization, they're like, oh shit, I can't get them back, right? This creates the energy shift, it makes them chase you, it switches the dynamics, you become the prize in their eyes once again, and this is a significant step in your healing, right? Because it plays, it causes a huge narcissistic injury as well, and that's another part of your healing, right? Inflicting narcissistic injuries. 
We do that unconsciously as empaths. Trust me. If you ever want to think a moment, you cause enough art injuries along the way. Don't worry about it. Trust me, you caused a lot of them. And that was actually part of the reason. That could be another video idea. That, that is part of the reason why, because of these injuries, they discarded you, right? So perhaps I'll touch on that in another video sometime. But anyway, um, thank you for watching. Please press the like and the subscribe button. Uh, I've got a new channel. If you want to check that out, the details of the link to that new channel is in the description box. As I, I, I made a video earlier, but just in case you haven't watched it, it's more about spirituality and our healing and stuff like that, just to give a contrast and a balance to what we talk about on this channel. And it was just ideas that I had and I didn't want to put on this channel to disrupt the theme and what you are actually coming for, for content on this channel. I didn't want to disrupt that. So anyway, um, thank you for watching. Um, if you would like to donate to the channel, you can find the details in the description box. And if you would like a one-to-one -one session as well, you can find the details in the description box. So anyway, I'll be back with another video soon. Peace.